Yeah. She's looking to win. I got what I deserve. So here's my library. Two little reveal. In 2015, tabletop gaming dominated video games on Kickstarter, and they've only continued to grow. Cards Against Humanity is a prime example. Yet games like Exploding Kittens raised over $8 million on Kickstarter. We joined three local tabletop game designers, John, Mike, and Kelly. That's kind of cool. In their quest of a publishing deal. I first got into game design um, by having a dream about a specific card for my current card game, Time Trotters, and it made me feel like that there was something there, like it could be a fun game. Three, three, Sorry, three, you don't get three, to be a hero four, today. Four, 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 four. So I quickly put together a prototype to see if it was fun, played with my coworkers at the time, and they actually did like it, and I haven't stopped since. Welcome to my game library. I'm Kelly Adams, and I'm going to show you around. So here's my library, and some of my all-time favorite games in them right now are pretty much anything Feld, but this is my top Feld game. It's been my top Feld game for a while. Uh, or Leon is another new one that's fantastic and quickly one of my favorites. Uh, Kingdom Builder has been a favorite for a lot, a long time, many years. And Dominion is one of the games that started it all and it's another one of my top favorite games. One thing that they all have in common is their male designers. And that's a big reason why I wanted to get into board game design. I had these ideas and it's been seven years since I started tabletop gaming and I hadn't done anything about them. So I kind of decided to make it my goal this year to get some of those ideas down on paper. I just started one day. I had an idea and uh, it was a terrible game. It was absolutely miserable. Uh, I decided to go through with it and uh, uh, kept tweaking and, and kept working on it and eventually it became something almost playable. Not quite, but almost. <laughs> Jumping, why not? Okay, okay. Uh, those are three actions. Then you draw from the time of fuel. And if it's an uh, event, play it. Yeah. Reveal all your white cards in your hand. The jump with the When local game designers get together, we kind of bounce our ideas off of each other. It's uh, it's almost like a, like a poetry jam where you kind of, you know, you're going to have your time up at the stool and you're going to be showing off to everybody. Uh, so Time Trotters is a time travel based card game. Uh, you're not a superhero, you're not a super scientist, you're a bunch of jerks on vacation. You're going around uh, kicking dinosaurs, punching Nazis, causing chaos, uh, seeding paradoxes left and right, all because you just want that one good souvenir. It's playing uh, Splendor. Uh, dinosaurs. Time of the dinosaurs! Barterville is a post-apocalyptic worker placement game where you play a gang member trying to get uh, either respect or fear. That's how you roll over your people. <laughs> so this is, uh, this is Ganymede, okay? This is set in the not-so-distant future. My primary project right now is, uh, is a game called Ganymede. It's named after one of Jupiter's moons. Everyone is a uh, contractor and uh, they're trying to win these job contracts by bidding for assets to, to recruit them and then they're trying to, to win the jobs and get paid and have the highest stock at the end of the year. And I get three dollars. Cool. No, no. And then you don't lose a resource. Yeah. Cool. Come, come conglomerate with me. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's, let's, let's conglom. Let's conglom. I need some of the money. So. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. Vegetable Garden is a game where you are collecting vegetables and you're manipulating a community garden to best suit your vegetables so they grow the best. So at the, if I have so tomatoes in my yeah. hands. So at the end we count up each vegetable because really I need vegetables. For Prototype Con is a uh, convention that's in its first year um, for local game designers, but we have had game designers come from as far away as Philadelphia and uh, Toronto. Uh, people bring out their toys and they show them off. Fire is broken out at the farm inside the walls. Swearing under your breath, you throw on what gear you can and rouse up your gang. Half dressed and groggy eyed, all of you run to, to see the crops in flame. A lieutenant suggests a bucket brigade of water. You are willing to sacrifice all of your water so that you could save the crops, all of your water, not the city's water. Will you let the crops burn or are you able to sacrifice all your water and hopefully save the crops? 
would you be able to build It's like those out? traits that you need to rely on, your patience, or, um, or being able to recite the rules over and over again, or kind of as, acting as a coach to, to get people to play right, kind of also teaches you, hey, is this game right? If I'm explaining this rule over and over again, if I'm having to uh, explain this mechanic or this stratagem over and over again, Maybe I did something wrong. That you have to pay food when you're recruiting if you're lower, if you're lower down the track. Getting feedback can be pretty difficult sometimes. It's, it's not always what you want to hear, but it's always what you need to hear. I don't know how I feel about that. I'm also trying to think thematically. That just feels weird. How people feel about your game is still a very important part of development. If I were you, I'd be looking to cut a mechanic or two. Although the game is fun, and I think it has replayability. It's tough to conquer that that immediate frustration that you did something wrong with this game. Like, especially when you're first early on developing a game, it really nourishes that seed of, maybe you weren't made for designing games. And it's tough dealing with that, dealing with that, that, that little voice inside of you going, no, 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 you shouldn't be doing this, you should be doing something else. There's no money in games. Just go do something else when there's still so much joy I got out of this. So I just I do everything I can to not, to divorce myself from that emotion because the reason someone is even giving me this feedback is because they want the game to get better. At the end of the day, what makes all the effort and all the investment worth it is the fact that you can bring something to the table that's yours, that you created, and you can watch people have a good time. It, it enriched their lives. It, it made them have a good day. <laughs> and once I've really made a game that I'm entirely satisfied with, then I'll start thinking about the next step. I'm actively looking for a publisher. I want a company that can take the game, build off of it, and put it into a much larger audience than I ever could by myself. So I'm in an interesting position where I have two offers to look at and figure out which company is best for me and my game. So that's kind of the process I'm in right now. With game design, if you are not haunted by the need to put that game out there, to see it come to life, get it, rip it out of your brain and throw it on the table, and you're hesitant about it, really ask how hungry are you for it. Just go for it. Just stick with it because after adjustments, it will grow and you'll grow and you'll be able to make better games. Go for it. Get over, move your token from fear over to respect and just go for it because you're, because we, I need to see your game. <laughs>